Hello family, hello. This is a continuation of our discussion. Like I said before, what happened to me, um, I'm going to recap. Um, I was due to go to a retreat with uh, some ladies. It was a sister's retreat to Cape Coast. And uh, I was dropped off the list of people who were going to this retreat. And then, and I said, this was going to start a debate. I was dropped off because I am not, I'm an African, but I'm not, I'm not considered as a, a diasporan because I'm an African. So the group of sisters decided that this retreat was only for uh, African-American, um, uh, Jamaican diasporan, um, not Africans, even though I live in the diaspora, I was not, uh, I didn't qualify to join the, um, the retreat. So I have a group of ladies here with me. I'm in Accra. Mm -hmm. I'm in Accra. Today is uh, Friday, the 19th of December. Of January. <laughs> Today is Friday, the 19th of January. I never know which day is which. Yes. So anyway, yeah, they're going to speak. And they're giving they're going to give their own um view on what had happened and why is it that um and why why what happened to me happened to me they will try to reason uh, to make sense of what had happened so without prejudice everybody will give their views without condemnation everybody will give their views not to offend anybody but it's a discussion we have to have if we have to move forward okay all right so we start. Let's go. Vamos. Tokei. Alonzi. Tuai. Let's go. Okay. Mommy is going to introduce herself. My name is Mami Ekua. Mami Ekua. Mm -hmm. We have her daughter. Yes. Hello. Good afternoon. My name is Ayeki. And we have my childhood friend. Okay, so this is the panel of people who are just going to give their point of view. So we're going to start with Ayike. Hello, so I'm here with uh, Sister Monique and Mama Ikuya, Bosse, Bosse. and um, once again, I am. I just want to give you a little background. I'm from. Ghana. Um, I have was born in America, but I have been living in Ghana most part of my life. And um, this discussion came, and the discussion came up this afternoon with um, Sister Monique uh, as she was discussing what happened with the uh, uh, retreat that she was supposed to go on. And then we also touched on uh, one young lady's thesis paper, which happened to be about um, how diasporans feel uh, their experience has been as diasporans living in the Prom Prom Ningo area, which is actually where my hometown is from. Um, so that brought on that discussion and um, just talk, we just touched on a few things. And uh, I don't want to say that, you know, African-Americans are bad. African-Americans have bad intentions. They're good people, they're bad people. They're, they're African-Americans coming into Ghana since the 1960s who have done wonderful things in the community, have, have participated in, in growing communities, helping uh, people, teaching, uh, teaching um, advising, um, T uh, t uh, teaching all kinds of skills and people who have gone on to have, have raised their families here as African Americans now even into Ghanaians. So um, the reason, the thing that I would like to say is that as an African American, if you want to come to Ghana or any country in the diaspora, I feel that the most important thing that you can do for yourself because let me just say africa is not for everyone those who have not been here it may not be for you 
But if you've made the decision that you would like to explore um, and have a knowledge and understanding of where your ancestors came from, and you just want to have that knowledge, that's fine. But if you make the decision that you would like to come and be part of the people who you are descendants of, then there are certain things that you have to keep in mind. I think one of the most important things is to have a goal. Have, know what you're coming here for, because that is what the Ghanaian is also looking to understand. What is your purpose in coming here? You know, as Africans, not even just here in Ghana, all over Africa and even in the diaspora, our concerns are, we have been exploited all our lives. That's all we know. So what is the purpose of you coming here for? Is it that you've heard that Ghana is open, you can come in, you can, you know, live cheaply, live well. You've heard people coming, they have, you know, big houses, they have acquired <laughs> land, they have done all these things, they have made, even acquired citizenship very easily. But you also have to understand what the average Ghanaian is thinking about when he hears all these things. Here he is in his own home. He may or may not be even be able to take care of his family the way he wants to or she wants to. They may not have the job that they want. They may not be able you know, to have the accommodation or living space that they want. Even land that may belong to them as clans, they may not even be entitled to. But then here comes someone who is not even really indigenous and has not even said what their purpose is and they can easily come and acquire all these things. So there, yes, there is that free, there is that feeling of the Ghanaian that they may be exploited because <coughs> land is being sold cheap to, to others, yet they don't get that same land. They don't get those jobs. They don't have the same opportunities. <coughs> Even as something as simple, you may think that getting your passport because you are entitled, and the government of Ghana has told you you're entitled to have a passport. <coughs> Can you imagine how the average Ghanaian is feeling when they have lived there here in Ghana all their life? And for them to be able to get a passport, it takes approximately six months or almost a year to be able to get that passport. And you, an African-American or a, a, an, an African Jamaican or someone from the diaspora who comes, is, is just given that right without any, without showing any sort of um, responsibility or commitment to the community that you are living in. Some also have expressed that African Americans may be segregating themselves in communities. And in doing so, their question is, so if you want to segregate yourself, then why come here? If you're not going to in immerse yourself in our culture, in our people, to support us, to help us to grow, Rather, we are feeling oppressed, we are feeling denied, we are feeling as if we are second class in our own home. So this is some of the questions and things that we were discussing this afternoon. And um, I hope that, you know, as we continue our discussion, um, you know, as diasporans, one ought to think carefully about what your intentions or goals are before coming to a place like Ghana, Nigeria, Togo, Benin. It's not just as simple as there's free land or there's cheap land or, you know, you know I can get my passport easily. Um, think about how your, your actions or your, your um, how things are gonna benefit you. How, how is it being perceived by the Ghanaian as well? They are also feeling that these people 
um, may be here to exploit us. You're going to be getting passports. What are you going to do with the passport when you haven't committed? Is it that you you have negative or, or, or evil plans? Can you can there be money laundering going? Can there be a, 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 a fraud going on? All kinds of things that you know cross people's minds. Yes, uh, Ghanaians are also not. You know, they're good Ghanaians and they're bad Ghanaians. People also have bad intentions, evil intentions. They will exploit something that is, is, is given to them when um, the opportunity comes, like everyone else. So just, just the thought, just thinking about it and um, hoping that you will also think about what the average Ghanaian would feel when they hear about African-American communities why communities why not all together that's the question yeah, mommy what, well, what's your take on that well, especially no on it is because you have so much experience audience. that we yeah. can all learn from mm -hmm. from my experience i wonder sometimes when we hear about all this uh, Ghanaians not accepting uh, the um, the people who are in diaspora, uh, they are African Americans who come here. But you, my question is, what is their purpose also? Because if they're coming here to see what they can contribute to the nation or bring some expertise, because we have had, as uh, uh, Ayiki was saying, that uh, there had been some in the 60s that came in here, uh, African Americans that came in here with their intentions of us uh, helping the Ghanaian people, such as they in training, education, some of them had schools, Farm. some of them uh, farming in agriculture. They contributed a lot and even there were some who had opened uh, uh, vocations like uh, plumbing, plumbing. Mm -hmm. that today, in this day, people who trained in those schools mm -hmm. uh, now are using plumbing, skills. Uh, these skills. There were some who trained like um, uh, uh, this old man that comes to do electricity. Mm -hmm. Some came with the skills of that and instructed and taught people. We know our own friends, the gardeners. Mm -hmm. They had a plumbing school. Mm -hmm. But now the plumbers, most of the plumbers ah, have been working. They're old now and maybe their children included in, in their will. So they came and uh, really contributed to you know, the development of Ghana. Their, that was their intentions of coming to assist. But now uh, it looks like uh, the present day, although it's, it's good for the, everyone to come and experience the motherland, if that's what you want to do. But at the same time, when you come, as you coming, you must have, uh, have uh, some good reason or maybe have some good uh, knowledge or what uh, how you come in to relate to the people in 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 Africa or Ghana mm -hmm. you know Ghanaians were known that you were very hospitable mm -hmm. they were they have been known to be and in Krumah's time, I mean, people wanted to come. Mm -hmm. And it, it, uh, it looked like uh, uh, people in uh, America, they were so, you know, encouraged mm -hmm. about what was happening here. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to come and contribute to, to help and enhance the development of Ghana. Mm -hmm. But now, we don't know uh, the uh, Ghanaian 
is having some Ghanaians are having difficulty in wondering why some of the African Americans have come in. What their purpose has been, have been, and what are their reasons for coming? Are they coming to uh, be able to thinking that they will be able to assimilate or you know join in anything at all, or have, have, are they coming because just to have a good time in Ghana? Mm -hmm. And also maybe whatever their motives are, we don't know. So it's difficult for the now Ghanaian to look at uh, the African American, especially when sometimes they might have had some experience about feeling that uh, the Amer uh, African American coming from America is looking down on them. Mm -hmm. So they they having difficulty relating to them, and also some of the some uh, probably have experienced the uh, relationship with African Americans. Anyway, so it's not that the Ghanaian is not accepting, mm -hmm. but now they are accepting with reservation. Mm -hmm. They are accepting people with reservation because they don't know what the, why, because it's not relating, they don't feel that you're relating to them as wanting to be really part of them mm -hmm. or part of our culture or mm -hmm. part of uh, the way we probably bringing up our children mm -hmm. or anything uh, anything that's not American. they consider not American. Well, mommy, you yourself, you lived in America for many years. Mm -hmm. You have your children, you've had your children in America. Mm -hmm. But what is it, what advice would you give when they're coming? Should they integrate in the culture here? What is yes. it that they have to know to be able to be accepted? Is it learning the language? What? Do you, I mean, from your experience in America and yes. being among when Americans and coming, actually, yeah. They have to make up their minds that it's going to be different that it's not going to be like living in America and have expectations, high expectations of coming to live here just like it is in America. They should know that it will be different and that the certain things that, and also they should also try and educate themselves before they come. <clears throat> like reading something about Ghana or whatever country they want to go to and their culture so they can figure out or can say oh my I, I can't relate to that so maybe that's not for me and they can just stay there <laughs> and they can just uh, just just, <laughs> just they can just remain or forget the idea of coming over because they didn't include me because I'm an African and I'm, an not African. They don't, I'm not considered as part of the diaspora, even though I've lived outside of my country for so many years and I've come to also settle in Ghana, in Ghana. like everybody. Yes, you are. A but then they say that no, this group of or this retreat mm -hmm. was, I was excluded from it because mm -hmm. I don't belong to the American community. Can no. I make one but, also, sorry. Yeah. say one thing also? Yeah, go ahead. We also have to yeah. re remember that Miss Monique, Sister Monique is not a Ghanaian, so she is also migrated from uh, uh, Congo to Europe, uh, all parts of Europe, and finally making her way back to Ghana as her choice. The same choice that diasporans have made to be somewhere and make a choice to come to Ghana. Mm -hmm. So that argument for me, there's no hope. The uh, question of do they want to integrate, mm -hmm. integrate with the African? I mean, do mm -hmm. they want to relate 
-hmm. and see where or see the African as to be like a brotherhood or something. A like sisterhood. That. Sisterhood. A sisterhood. Mm -hmm. Whether you are coming from wherever yes. part of the diaspora. Or, or wherever it is, you can be from any part of Africa, mm -hmm. but uh, living not in your own country. Mm -hmm. Will they, will they think, will they consider that as living in diaspora? Mm -hmm. Or is diaspora only belonging to people from America? Or Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Or Jamaica. Or, West or the West Indies. Mm -hmm. Should That's they the so so if you are an African living in not in your own country, country mm -hmm. maybe I'm South African and I am now living in Ghana. Will I be considered living in diaspora? Am, am I a diasporian? But the most important thing I think is the fact that you are considered to be an African first. Mm -hmm. So if they are considering you to be an African diasporan, then the term African relates to all of Africa, including those who live outside of Africa. Yeah. So then why would there be that exclusion? Because it's, they don't say the Ghanaian American. They mm -hmm. say it's African American. Mm -hmm. So that should include everything. Okay, okay. Now Bosse. Good afternoon, my name's Bosse Ige. Born in the UK. Lived and schooled in Nigeria. Lived in the United States for the last 25 years, my second visit to Ghana. The Ghanaians are the most embracing, friendly people I have ever met in my life, and I've been around the world. Um, but what I did before I came was I read about their culture and their tradition. Just like any country you visit around the world, the minimum you could do for yourself is to say what is right and what is wrong in terms of their culture. One of the things I learned is never shake, give, or receive using your left hand. That's a big thing in Ghanaian culture. Secondly, you need to greet Ghanaians like greetings. Back in the United States, nobody greets anybody. Everybody just walks by like you're nobody. But here, greeting is very important. It's an insult to walk and see an elderly person or even anyone and not even greet them. So those are the things I wanna say that if you are deciding to come to live in any country around the world, not necessarily Ghana, learn about their tradition and their custom, at least the basics, right? The worst thing you wanna do is come to a country and now start to do them and us. Mm -hmm. yes. That is wrong. It's a no-no. It's a no-no. Then you build up all this, uh, I don't want to use that. Resentment, which is not necessary. Mm -hmm. Everybody's trying. Everybody wants to live a good life. Everybody wants to be happy. Mm -hmm. We can make it happen. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, both. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. We are joined. We're also joined by Miss Louise, who is, has lived in the UK. Yeah. Okay. She was born in, mommy said she was born in the UK. Yes, yes I was. You were born in I the UK. I was born there. Yes. yes. So my name is Louis Simango. Uh, my father actually, his father was from Mozambique, but married my grandmother a Ghanaian. So he, they came to settle in Ghana. So I'll say he's a diasporan from wow. Mozambique. Um, I was born in the UK, but came to Ghana as a baby. So I've lived in Ghana for quite a long time, up to 1980, uh, when I went back to Britain to study. And I saw there was a, a culture clash, definitely. Because as Bosse said, Ghanaians are polite, mm. or sort of willing to help out if possible. Whereas in Britain, people ignore you. They don't say hello or anything. And they also want to know your own business, which, you know, and at times at work, people said, oh, you're too quiet. And as my dad used to say, you don't know what they are thinking and, they don't, and you don't want them to know what you are thinking. Uh, also, I've experienced a fair bit of discrimination in Britain at work um, there were a lot of i would say white british 
people and there were two of us who are not um, white and say whenever there was a conference or something they sort of excluded us wow. or there was uh, maybe an event and they traveled to Scotland but not include us which was a social event mm -hmm. and I found that was quite discriminatory mm -hmm. they did a survey at work and I pointed that out but of course nothing was done about it because they said it's equality you know inclusion and all that but which was not true at all um so i've come back to ghana for a while and i'm settling back into life here so i'll see how it goes but i think i enjoy life more here than there oh, definitely. Definitely. okay so you haven't experienced the african-american Mm, uh, you haven't no, been around them much. Yes. No, I haven't. No, no I haven't no. yet. No. Mm. So in this case, mm -hmm. would they say she's a dia diaspora? <laughs> no, that, no, no, even no, no. diaspora is, means you make immigrated from your normal place to yes, somewhere to else. Yes. You, you see, that's uh, the diaspora. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah. But I don't know what is their own. This group of women, the sisters, what is the their, their own definition yeah, of yeah, diaspora. Yeah, that, that's, you understand? Um, that's yes. another yeah. thing that they have to, you have to learn Thank you, sir. about yes. to know what the, the, their interpretation of diaspora yeah, that's true. is. Mm -hmm. Or oh, maybe we should look in the dictionary and know no, what the diaspora is. The dictionary so says, says what? You, my, coming from one place of mm -hmm. your of your original place, place. And, and and being cast outside into of outside uh -huh. of your original place mm -hmm. and uh, through migration mm -hmm. uh, 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 dispersion, dispersion mm -hmm. wars mm -hmm. uh, things like that mm -hmm. so in her case she definitely has been migrated because she was not able to go to congo mm -hmm. um because of problems there and she has lived in different parts of the world almost all of her adult life and now has come to settle in a place that is not a home mm, but it's peaceful that's what the mm -hmm. reason why we chose to come here mm -hmm. this is not a uh, congo so why would she not be considered a diaspora mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes yeah, that's it. Yes, that's, that's what I was saying. The group of women they decided that me, I'm not part of them because it's mainly um, that's right. Mm -hmm. So they say this is our our close group. Oh. But you you sent out the invitation to sisters. Mm -hmm. Somebody included me in the group, which I didn't ask for, and I said, oh, I was interested to go to this retreat, but only for them to, to say. Then in that case, then maybe what what ought to be said then is it should not be considered an. A, di a diasporan group retreat. Mm -hmm. It's just a closed group of friends that would like to go on a trip. Exactly. Yes. And exclude to exclude you, you based on the fact mm -hmm. that you are not a diasporan and not an, an, and an African, but not a diasporan. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. is not, uh, I think, mm -hmm. uh, the correct or <laughs> that is that's an, an incorrect statement. Is what I would like to say. So um, this looks like segregation. Yeah. Yes. For me. Yes. Because you say in the in the 60s, that's what they were doing before in Ghana here, yeah. where you have areas that just belong to, to the yeah. whites. Who the say, yes. Before, before, like we is we when we were colonized, still, until Nkrumah came. Beaches here were, <clears throat> you know, waters sealed off by the British, this is European only. Uh, what do you call it? Trespassers will be prosecuted. Uh, prosecuted. Mm -hmm. So these are things like coming in and taking a portion of the African, mm -hmm. the indigenous African portion and taking it, making it your own, and the, and asking them that you can come here. The certain areas that you can come to. This is what makes brings uh -huh. resentment. So yes. uh -huh. this brings resentment, mm -hmm. and it looks, it appears that the recent influx 
of American, African Americans mm -hmm. coming to Stopping Ghana, mm -hmm. we welcome them, but we don't, we hope they're not coming to segregate, bring seg some kind of segregation into the land, like excluding people from going to certain areas portion of mm. as theirs mm. because they bought it from a chief. Mm. Mm. Even a whole beach front mm. has it will be saying telling mm. others that he had bought a beach front mm. and watered it off only for African Americans. not allowing the Ghanaian. So in other words, it doesn't seem like they want us to relate to them as, as they call themselves the brothers and whatever. What, where is the sisterhood and where the brotherhood? If you want to relate to the Africans, you're coming here to relate to the Africans in their in, land, in their land, mm -hmm. and uh, have their experience or learn about them, and can you know use whatever you 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 learn here to see how you can enhance yourself over there, over part when you go, or see how the thinking that. For instance, it's just only the, the acquiring wealth that makes you somebody. Or putting it into, or the, putting community. into the community. Mm -hmm. But you can really have nothing but show brotherhood, sisterhood. Respect. Respect, mm -hmm. respecting anyone regardless of where they come from. Mm -hmm. Who they are or who they are, yes. I mean, I mm. say that that is a mm. form of discrimination against mm. the people who live here. Yes. You know, they've come in and have formed their own societies and have excluded the indigenous people from here. Mm. So it's what they experienced in the States is what they are bringing to Ghana. Mm. <laughs> yeah, what yeah. they experienced. What they experienced right? in Absolutely. the States. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm. I also kind of want to touch on the economic impact of having impacts of 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 of, uh, of uh, diasporans into the into into the country, and then not necessarily just Ghana, but also in um, other African countries, as. Uh, as we all know, our, our currencies are tied to the U.S. dollar. So when there's an influx of U.S. dollars, our money is also devalued. So in thinking and doing things when you come here, think of the economic, the social, the cultural impact that comes with coming in such numbers, or, and, and, and that also has to do with your reasoning. Are you coming here just to have party and fun? Or are you coming here to see, hey, this is, this is our, our homeland and maybe what can I do? Or how, are we, how is my being here? How can I relate to these people? How, how does my being here affect how other people are living? Your being here may or may not affect our economies. Instance wise, the, the, the average Ghanaian cannot even, because of the way that there's been an influx of African Americans, diasporans, buying up lands, buying up properties, the average Ghanaian cannot even live in Accra where they work. They cannot afford it because it, it's, the, the values have been raised so high and not to say that it's the diasporans' fault, this is an economic thing, but it calls for questioning and also trying to be in remembrance of these things, how it's affecting the people who you are trying to support. 
sim something as simple as um, um, you know jobs you may have jobs you know that you would probably be more qualified to do but the African the African is here willing and ready to learn to do it but because you have the the name African diasporan or African American diasporan attached to you and you are recognized by that you're giving you're given more opportunity than the indigenous Ghanaian so there's so many things that bring can bring that feeling that you're saying that they don't like you but these are some of the reasons that we've outlined here that if we are mindful as people to say that hey i'm coming I, I'm, this is my motherland too. Thank you. Ms. Ms. We ran out of space. So anyway, you got the gist of uh, what everyone was trying to say mm -hmm, here. Mm -hmm. And um, so closing. Thank you very much. I hope we, uh, I hope I was able to uh, just give a little insight and um, about what and how we're feeling. You're welcome. And I'm glad I, I could share a little bit of... Uh, the experience. Thank you so much. Thank you, Miss Louise. Thank you. I felt that was a helpful discussion and hope this will help others as well. Thank you. Thank you so much for following. I hope you learned something. I hope you learned something from this discussion. All I can say, be good, be kind, always be kind. 2024 is a year where we do better. We must do better. Peace, be kind. Bye from Accra.